Hello, thanks for clicking on the video. Smith in the building, and uh, today we're going to be looking at typical details. Um, I guess I noticed that a lot of folks seem to find my uh, concrete structural videos helpful, and um, that's kind of where I get a lot of the majority of my views is what I noticed. So just in keeping in touch with the community, I wanted to provide another um, similar video where we're talking about structure, structural foundations, things like that. And so um, we are looking at the typical details. And of course, this is a existing building in the city of Baltimore. It's the Hollabird Academy. And um, you can find those drawings online. Uh, that's what I did. If you type this into your Google search, maybe type PDF, um, then you should be able to locate those drawings. Um, I'll, I'll, and if you want to, I'll put a link in the description. In dealing with these typical details, we are going to be looking at a few different structural components, such as concrete. Um, you're going to see reinforcing bar, rebar is what it's called. Um, you're going to see some masonry components and there's also going to be some steel. So let's let's look at this first detail here. This is a step footing, a step footing. Um, now, of course, we're looking at it this from like the side view, you know, um, so keep that in mind. So here it's just kind of telling you how a step footing is going to break down. Let's zoom into it. All right, so you can see that um, because this is a typical detail, that means that whether the slab at this point is five inches, which is like a typical slab on grade, or whether it's seven inches at that point, you're, you're still going to use this detail. That's why it just lists varies, and it doesn't really have any numbers uh, associated with it. However, it does give you like a maximum thickness of the concrete and if it goes beyond that, then it's just saying don't apply this detail. You'll have to look for something else. So as long as this dimension is less than 24 inches or two feet, um, then we can use this detail whenever we need to know uh, how to, to see a cut of the step footing. All right. So um, you can see here that we've got reinforcing bar that crosses each other it probably ties right there and then uh, you have a l-shaped bar rebar um, right there now it doesn't give a clearance right here normally there's a clearance for uh, how far away you know from the edge of concrete you need to be with your rebar but I don't see that right there um, this may be in a note though well we'll have to look at the notes but this is pretty typical it's just showing as your slab continues to step down and step and step, uh, all you have to do is kind of have this sort of a format for your reinforcing bar. So this is, we're not going to spend a lot of time on this. Hopefully you all can see that this is not that difficult. Now the one thing that it says here is that um, when you're stepping your footing down, you need to step at least one foot out. Um, or it, I don't know about at least, but it's just showing here that you need to come one foot out, 12 inches out. And so your rebar is going to fall within this 12 inches and that sort of thing. So that's, that's really the only thing I would say to look at and take note of on that detail. Now let's move along because um, I want to get through a lot of these. And uh, of course, if you have questions, maybe I ran through something too quickly, leave it in the comments. I try to answer questions and in some cases I even make another video uh, dedicated to your question if I think you know it is something that is um, useful for other folks all right so this next one is the construction joint and slab on grade you'll have a construction joint you know it breaks your slab into smaller pieces and uh, we have a note here it says between construction joints the contractor shall provide saw cut control joints that shall be placed oh sh that shall be spaced as shown on plans and or indicated in the general notes saw cut joints shall be a quarter in a quarter 
of the slab thickness in depth and shall be cut as soon as the concrete is firm enough not to be torn or damaged by the blade and before random shrinkage cracks can be formed in the concrete slab so after the concrete is poured like they said you know when it's when it's solid enough for someone to drive a machine on it um the saw cutter guys come through and they do make these imprints uh with their blades a construction joint is actually when you have a existing slab or maybe something that was poured it's, it's pretty much the break point between one pour and the next pour and so that's what they have right here indicated um it's kind of a way so that this is supposed to be one long um continuous slab you know there's really no break here this is meant to be let's say a i don't know just a slab on grade typically depending on the size you don't pour a whole slab on grade at once now maybe you do for a house but for like a commercial building you normally don't so this is just a way to connect uh one pour to the next and that's what they have indicated here um so in addition to that here it does show your clearance now the x's that you see the x the x's um and and then these lines here this is wire mesh this is not rebar this is wire mesh and so uh similar to rebar you would have a circle here if this is rebar and this uh you know was coming straight at you here with the wire mesh it's an x so that is something that's going to be running um in a direction that we cannot see but then in the left to right direction uh you see it here and and i'll flash on the screen how th this comes in a mat you know this isn't something that um they normally have to uh tie together and everything like rebar but anyway that's that's what you see there and so this note here says that there needs to be one inch between the top of wherever this wire mesh is and the top of slab so that's something that needs to happen and then with the rest of the assembly it shows that there's a vapor barrier that's right underneath this slab or whatever this is and maybe a sidewalk and then you have washed gravel so this is this is just you know these are job specific things sometimes they're the same between a construction project to construction project but this is a typical uh typical detail for this project all right and uh the last note it says key control joint c note below so that's what's indicated there and we read that note um so that's that's what that's referencing all right let's move along okay now we have now we have a typical detail for a depressed slab on grade all right so depressed slab on grade well you can see it here there's um maybe a drop off right there a step up something like that that's happening uh doesn't give a dimension there it says see the plan so um uh, we would have to go look at the floor plan and see what's actually happening here and so a lot of times you may have this um well i see it a lot in let's say a house for instance you know you have your uh depressed slab maybe at the bathroom um you may be where the where the um shower pan is going to go or if you have uh steps or something like that um that's where you would have a depressed slab um and you know this i'm not webster's dictionary or anything but just kind of giving you a general idea there's not a whole lot of depression that occurs you know this isn't going to drop off like a couple of feet or anything like that so uh it's, it's just slightly depressed slightly um l lower elevation than your typical slab here just a couple of things so you have one number four continuous rebar and it's showing that there and it's showing this rebar here so that's what you're putting to kind of stiffen this whole thing and this is your like we just looked at your wire mesh that's what's coming across there 
and that break line is pretty much just indicating that this uh, is not this could be any length whenever you see that that means that this whole thing could be any length this could be another 20 feet or or not so we'll continue looking at all these notes all right we've got two inches of clearance that's needed for the rebar two inches of space right there that's needed between the rebar and the slab or the edge of slab and from the from the slope of the ground underneath uh, it's saying that you need to come out eight inches in order to make that slope this is giving a two to one slope there and so it's listing out I guess kind of the minimum um, space that you would need to come out if you had this you had this ratio going on you would have to count eight inches until the edge of the slab hopefully I'm saying that in a way that makes sense it's also indicating that um, if we were flying over this thing you would see these number four number four rebar at 24 inches on center meaning every 24 inches there would have to be one of these this is again applied to this rebar here and this is something that you would see spaced if you're flying overhead so that's that all right okay here we have typical detail number well letter D this is the deepen slab for non bearing masonry walls so if you have a masonry wall being built anywhere um, there's going to be a thickened slab in order to hold um, the weight of that masonry wall now even though it says this is a non bearing or non load bearing masonry wall meaning that that there's nothing structurally that's going to rest on the top of this masonry wall it tells you how wide your depression needs to go um, so the bottom of your depression needs to be four inches more than the thickness of your masonry wall that's what the T plus four inches means right there it's also listing out uh, an angle for your for your slope here 45 degree angle another dimension that it lists out is um, this depth of the depression and the deepened slab is going to match the same dimension as however thick the slab, uh, this masonry wall is so let's say that this masonry wall or does it say what it is here let's see number four for the okay so this is a six inch CMU well it says CMU maximum so let's just say that this is a six inch CMU wall the thickness is six inches so this would be depressed six inches and you would have a total of 10 inches at the bottom of that depression and we'll read the note here number four rebar at 40 inches on center for six inch CMU wall only at contractors option bar can be grouted into slab with six inch epoxy gel so all of that saying is that um, normally you'll have this bar sticking up out of the ground and you will kind of build your masonry wall around that and um, you can even apply epoxy gel in order to kind of hold this more so in place and as far as the 48 inches on center that they're talking about uh, the length that this wall runs you know it's running that way it's running that way it's running straight forward we can't see it we're standing right in front of it um, you're gonna see one of these rebars every 48 inches every four feet and so that's what that's indicating 